In this video, we're trying to come up with a rotational analog to Newton's second law. So if you remember Newton's second law, which I like to call N2, says that F net equals MA. So what's the equivalent of this when we talk about rotational dynamics? Well, torque we refer to as a twisting force, so that's going to be replacing F net here. And A, acceleration in linear dynamics, well, that's replaced with angular acceleration. But what about the M? So I wanted to remind you that we've already seen rotational kinetic energy as one-half I omega squared. And if I compare that to translational kinetic energy, I see what plays the role of mass in rotational dynamics. It's the moment of inertia I. And of course, rotational velocity instead of ordinary velocity is also in that formula. So if I want a rotational version of Newton's second law, so I suppose I could just call it rotational N2. Instead of F net, I use the net torque experienced by an object. Instead of mass, I use the resistance to angular acceleration, which is the moment of inertia. It tells you how hard it is to change how fast something is rotating. And I use alpha, the angular acceleration. And just a little reminder here, I is given by, for a distribution of point masses, you take each of those masses and multiply it by how far it is from the center of rotation for that problem, squared. So the choice of your rotation axis actually changes the moment of inertia for a distribution of mass. The alternative here, here is for a continuous distribution, for example, a, a uniform rod rotated about one end or about the center, or a hollow sphere or a solid ball or a solid cylinder, etc. For those sorts of continuous distributions of mass in these rotation problems, we just look up the formulas which are derived using calculus. Okay, let's apply our rotational version of Newton's second law to a problem. So I have a disk of mass 1.9 kilograms, radius 12 centimeters, it's accelerated from rest by applying a 2.5 newton meter torque to its hub for 1.0 seconds using a string. So in this case, we're actually told how big is the torque. So I want to compute the angular acceleration of the disk. That means I need to know the torque, 2.5 newton meters, and the moment of inertia. Well, for a heavy disk, you look this up and you get 1 half mr squared. That's how hard it is to twist a disk. So I have 1 half times the mass, that's 1.9 kilograms, times r squared, so 0.12 meters squared, and I've got my moment of inertia for the disk. And out of this, I get 0 0.0137 kilogram meters squared. Now I can get my angular acceleration. Just turning around the rotational N2, which again was torque equals I alpha. I'm trying to solve for alpha. So alpha equals torque over moment of inertia. It gives me 2.5 Newton meters divided by 0 0.0137 kilogram meters squared. And I've got my acceleration in radians per second squared. And that comes out to 183 radians per second squared. Part B, compute the number of turns completed in that 1.0 seconds where we are accelerating from rest. So this is a way of combining a rotational dynamics question with a rotational kinematics question. And I'm just going to go to my first kinematics formula. And I know this thing started from rest, so omega naught is zero. I forgot to put the subscript on my theta naught there. And there's two ways to handle the theta naught. I could say just assume we started with an angle of zero, and you don't lose any generality by doing that you get to set, set the starting point for the system of coordinates. Alternatively, you could subtract theta naught from both sides and say what you're really solving for is delta theta. There's no problem with doing it that way. I just prefer to cross out theta naught. So I get 1 half alpha times t squared, which is 1 second squared. And out of this, I get 91.37 radians. But that's not exactly what I was asked for. I was asked for the number of turns. So I have to do a little bit of unit analysis. 91.37 radians multiplied by one turn for every 2 pi radians. In other words, you're dividing by 2 pi. 
and out of that, I get 14 and a half turns. 